Hebrews 12 and 1. I'm going to try not to keep you too long tonight. Um, but I've just got a short little thought I'd like to give to you. And uh, somewhere along the line, we, it'd be good if you picked this up. You got it? Say amen. amen. Thank you for standing on the reading of the word. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Let's pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you one more time for anointing and help in this message tonight, God. Lord, talk to us in Jesus' name. And everybody say it, amen. amen. You may be seated. We are compassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses, like Enoch, who walked with God, like David, who fought the giant, went through all of the turmoil and the trial to be faithful unto God in his service to God. We are compassed about by the witnesses of those that have gone on before us. The witnesses of Abraham as he came out of the promised land, he went into the promised land and he walked with God and he was faithful unto God. We are compassed about by this witness in our life of God being faithful. We are compassed about of a witness on every side. The witnesses of so many that have fought the fight. They have been there before us. It is like Job whenever he went through all of the trials that he went through. We have him as a witness that God God is faithful. We have him as a witness that when you trust in God, believe in God, call on God, God will bring you through. We have the witness of Daniel who though he went through the lion's den, though he was taken away from his family, though he was held in bondage, he was still faithful to God. These are the witnesses that we are compassed about with, church family. I want to talk to us tonight that there are some things that are witnesses in our life. There are some things on every hand that show us forth the praises of our God, the power of God, the witnesses of men like Jeremiah, that when it was difficult, when it was overcoming, he held on to God's unchanging hand. He didn't turn to the left and he didn't turn to the right and God came through for him. All of these died not having seen the promise but believed in it. I'm telling you what, they worked the fight, they ran the race, they held their head up, they didn't go to bed at night giving up, they didn't quit every time they turned around. They said, I've set a course to live for God and I'm going to make it all the way. I'm not going anywhere. God, whenever you look for me, I'm going to be right here. Isaiah said, Lord, you want to send somebody? Send me. I'll tell you something. We need to recognize that before you came somebody. Before you came many. Before you. That testified to the goodness of God. That testified to the mercies of God. That testified to the greatness of God's love and all of His compassion in your life. And you wonder why sometimes it might get difficult and sometimes it might get hard and sometimes it might get weary. But I want to know, is there anybody here tonight that says, I have come through. I want to know, can you testify that you have come through? I know the stories of the preachers that was run out of town. Run out of town with uh, no money and no vehicle and lost their home and threatened their life. You see, I... I know the stories that my grandfather told about men coming out to the old brush arbors and threatening to kill the preacher, coming out with guns and, 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 and knives and threatening to run in the preachers off the road at night on their way home. And, and I, I know these stories. There are some people that have gone before us that have been through some things. 
Sister Savannah testified tonight about the story about the man in Saudi Arabia. And I remember when I was just a little younger than you, I met that Chinese guy. And the story about whenever they came into church and rounded everybody up and padlocked the church door where they couldn't have church anymore. There are some people that have been through some things. And they are the witnesses that it's worth the effort. It's worth the journey. It's worth the difficult. It's worth the labor. I promise you it's worth every tear that you cry. God's going to see you through. Amen. Amen. We sit there and how many of y'all you know as well as I do. Some of us in this house today has been through. We've been through a storm. We've been through a war. We've been through a battle. We've been through a problem. And we have come through the other side. And God has been faithful through it all. But the enemy was a liar and the father of it. And he wants you to think that you failed, that you messed up, that you were no good, that you were worthless. I'm telling you something today. If you've been through something, you need to hold your head up and say, God held my hand through the darkest of hours, through the times when I didn't have anything, through the times when I didn't know where I was going or what I was doing. I just simply called on God and he brought me through. I've been through. The devil's a liar and the father of it. We got to stop being the, in, the, in, the, in the mode of quickly just sucking our thumbs and pouting. Our, our lower lip never needs to drag the ground. I'm going to tell you what, it's hard for your lip to drag the ground when your eyes are on Jesus. Amen. How many times, what's, the one, what's that one time in life you can't sing the blues? When you speak it in tongues, whenever you're praising and worshiping God, you're talking about how great God is, it's hard to sing the blues. It's hard to talk about how all the problems are around you, how you ain't got no money and your dog left you and, you, and, and, and somebody stole your boat and your car's got flat tires. And, and when you start singing about the goodness of God and realize you wouldn't have had a car if God hadn't gave it to you. You wouldn't have had a boat if God didn't give it to you. You wouldn't have had a dog if God didn't give it. I'm going to tell you something. Everything that I have, God gave to me. And if I lose it all tomorrow. I've been through and God's went through it with me and I got a testimony. I am compassed about with people in this church tonight that has some testimonies. There's been people here. You've been burned. You've been hurt. You've been scalded. People's lied on you, told stories on you, kicked you when you were down. I'm going to tell you something. You've been through and you're like witnesses to me. And I've been through, and I want to be a witness to you. You see, we've got to recognize that when our brother and sister goes through something, when they come out, it ain't going to be many days before you go through something. And they're going to be the witness that if you'll just hold on. Mm, hallelujah. I like old Paul. Imagine this. Paul said, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors more abundant, in stripes above measures, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Of the Jews, five times receive I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice suffered shipwrecked. A night and a day have I been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mire of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among the brethren, among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness and watchings often. In hunger and thirst, in fasting oft, in cold and nakedness. Beside these things there are without that, with that which cometh upon me daily and the care of all the churches. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. I've got a Paul that stands before me as a witness, Sister Knowlton. Guess what? He's been through a few things. That's right. <laughs> when I need... A testimony. I don't need to look at somebody who failed. Well, Tommy John went through that situation and he just quit living for God. 
I don't want to hear about Tommy. I don't want to hear about Susie. I want to hear about faithful Frankie, the one that got up every morning and said, though the world forsake me, yet will I live for Jesus. Though he slay me, yet will I serve him like Brother Job said. No matter where the winds may be, no matter what the waves may be, I'm going to get up every morning. I'm going to put my feet on the deck and I'm going to sail for Jesus. Amen? Because I am compassed about with greater cloud of witnesses. I don't have to look into the belly of some person that did not make it because there's too many around me that can show me that God is never going to leave me. He's never going to forsake me. All I got to do is call His name in the midnight hour. All I got to do is seek after Him. He said, whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified. I'm going to tell you what, God's trying to be glorified in your life. God's trying to be glorified. God does not want to be over shadowed by problems. God wants to be a victor in your problems. I was talking to Sister Amy tonight before church and she's very sick. And she said, all for the glory of God. I said, God's not glorified in you being sick. God's glorified in you being well. You know something? We suffer foolishly. I'm using this to talk to us. I'm not talking about Sister Amy now. But you're talking about us. We use these things and we suffer foolishly. Paul could have said, I'm going to have my lip dragging the ground because I got stoned. Let me get stoned again. I should be stoned. I should be cut out. I should be hurt. I should be bruised. I should be punished. No. He believed in the overcoming power of God. If I just keep serving God, yeah, some things are going to come along. You know, he wasn't touting all of his problems, but whenever the word was happening in Corinthians, the church at Corinth, and they were touting against Paul, Paul's like, hey, wait a minute, boys. Let me tell you who I am. Let me testify to you that you can get through too. You know, if I've been through this, what can you get through? If I've been shipwrecked, what can you do? I've been through. I've been through a lot. I've been through it all. But God never failed me. Do not suffer foolishly. For the man that would say, it glorifies God that I am sick. It's like the man says, it glorifies God that I'm a sinner. That don't make any sense, does it? In my sickness, it's going to help people to see that I am faithful in all of my diseases. Really? He took stripes for you to stay sick. No. No. That's you know. Well, <laughs> here I sit on a bar stool, <laughs> drinking like an earnful, <laughs> praising God all the way. Ain't God glorified in all of my sinful ways? No, God's not glorified in your sinful ways. The God's not glorified in your sickness. God's not glorified in your disease. God's not glorified in your sadness. God's not glorified in your depression. God's not glorified in the demonic oppression on your life. God's not glorified in any of that. God's glorified with a church who has their hands lifted up, who's praising and worshiping God, who is victorious. That's where God receives His glory. He, God, receives glory when somebody can testify that they've been through. I've been through. I've been through the problems. I've been through the trials. I've been through the storm. Satan's glorified when you quit. Do I have a quitter in here? I don't want to be a quitter. I want to be a survivor. I want to be an overcomer. Glory. Well, praise the Lord and glory to God. The devil's been on my case all day long. Bless his holy name. I'm just listening for the sound of the trumpet that I might just get my fingernails and crawl my way to the pearly gates and, and eat being between the... as they shut on everybody. And I just... If I could just ease into heaven. God's looking for a triumphant church. God's looking for a glorious church. 
God's looking for somebody to walk through heaven and said, I went through hell. I had all of this on my back. I was divorced. I was overcome. I was addicted to drugs and alcohol. I was addicted to womanizing and pornography. I was addicted to manizing. And I was addicted to all this stuff. But God saw me. God loved me. His blood covered me. My sickness was healed. And I glorified God. And though the winds of death overpassed me, and though the shadows of doubt brought me down, I stood up boldly, and I proclaimed the name of the Lord against my problems. And God spoke to my storm and said, Peace be still. And I was able to carry on through to the other side. I got on my knees and I began to pray. And my family mocked me. And they threw me out. And they didn't love me. I had to sneak around to go to church because everybody was against me. But oh, I came through. And when I came through, the phone call that was ringing was they was asking for me to pray for them. Oh, oh, oh. we are compassed about by so glad a cloud of witnesses. But I want to tell you something. There are some people here tonight. There are some people, Sister V. Hill, in this house that whenever you start feeling glum, old chum, somebody in this house, you don't have to go very far. Somebody right here has already been through what you're going through. And the way they got through it is the same way you can get through it because the Word of God says He is no respecter of person. If they went through holding to Jesus' unchanging hand, you can get through it. Amen. Glory. Got kids in school. Let me tell you something. You know how to get through school? With a good look on your face and a power in your step, you get through with Jesus. The same way some other people in this church got through the school. I'm going to tell you what, you can make it through all the peer pressure. You don't have to bend and you don't have to mold and you don't have to become like the world. You can look at the drug dealer in the eye and say, get thee behind me. I don't want to hear you again. Don't even come near me. Everybody worrying about bullying. You know what I got to say about bullying? Bull! Sorry. Did I say that out loud? Because I want to teach the children in this church not to worry about bullying. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Where is little Princess Naomi? Where is she at? Oh, who cares? I don't care if you're... You're going into first grade, darling, or second? Can I tell you something? Them big bad fifth graders that are mean and ugly, they ain't got nothing on you. Uh, who's going into kindergarten this year? Noah. Can you get uh, uh, when you get the Holy Ghost, guess what? Ain't no big bad boy or girl in that school got anything against you. You look at them square in the eye and say, Do you know who you're messing with? I'm a child of the living God. Can I tell you, there is no power in heaven or earth greater than what is in you. Amen. Jesus is the majority. Won't you get on His team? He's never lost a battle. He never got a black eye. He's never done anything. He's never had any day that He's, re he, he's been sad. He's always full of joy. Amen. How many of y'all like to make God happy? Amen. I'm going to tell you how to do it. Repent. Oh. Repent of your blues. Repent of your sadness. Repent of anything that's against God. The gifts of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, kindness, faith, temperance. Against such there is no law. You see, anything that's against that is not right with God. If you'll repent of the blues, God will forgive you. And whenever God forgives you, you get joy. You get happiness. You get a song. You get a dance. You get. Oh, I'm telling you a reason. I, you know what? There are some people in this world that dance for the wrong reason. But there are some that dance for the joy of the Lord. When I get up in the morning, I get up to please God because God got up a long time ago to please me. A man that has friends must show himself friendly. He is my friend. Sister V. Hill, before I ever sinned, he died for me. Before I ever got sick, he took stripes for me. He's already done it. I've been through because of him. I've been through a law. I've been through a lot of things because of him. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. You know, all the bright sunny days ahead of us. We're anticipating. Y'all know what we're going to probably have around here tomorrow? 
sunshine. <laughs> I've been enjoying the clouds, but some reason or another, when you live where we live, there's sunshine almost every day. It's very unusual to have cloudy, rainy days, and I love them when it happens, but uh, pretty much it's easy to call for sunshine tomorrow. Can I tell you what you get with God? With God, everything is beautiful. With God, there is already the predictability of what happens with Him. You see, the reason why sometimes we have the clouds in the Spirit and the problems in our life, it's because we're down here amongst men and we're not there above the storm. You see, if you've ever been on one of them big old airplanes flying through the sky, it doesn't matter what the storm is like down here because once you rise above it, it's always sunshine. You see, whenever you get a hold of God, He'll lift you up out of your murky, miry clay and He'll set your feet on the tops of the mountains where you can just look across above all the storms that you were going through. And somebody like Sister V is going to look at you one day and go, How'd you get there? Say, I've been through. Come on, let me show you how I got through. I'm a witness and a testimony of how I got through. I'm telling you what, you need to be ready to show forth the praises of God. Paul went through some stuff. I mean, I've been in jail. I never went to jail when I wasn't living for God. When I served God, next thing I know, I spent, I spent a nice little time in the, in the pokey. Got my 12 hours of affliction and I got out of there. For these guys that want to stay longer, that's their own mistake. I, I, Sister Nolton, this is something I don't understand. I don't think you've ever... You've been in the pokey? Okay, good. Because I'd, I'd hate to be sitting here embarrassing you. Why is it that after someone goes to jail and they mully grubbing, thinking about suicide, thinking about quitting, when they get out, they do it again? Man, I got in jail for a DUI. When I get out, I can't wait to run down on Friday night to the dew drop in. Fill my belly full of what put me in here in the first place. Big moron. Lost four jobs because you can't quit popping pills. Nobody, you, you always, out, you can't, nobody even count on, I, I, I hope I'm not talking about it in here. If I am, just listen to me, you need to hear it. <laughs> Can't hold a relationship, can't hold a friendship, can't hold a job. Because you'd rather be out of your mind on some kind of pill, whether it's prescription pills or non-prescription pills. Can I tell you something? You need to put the pills away and get the gospel. I don't know if we got women these days are still addicted to Valium like it was when I was growing up. Mama's little helpers. But I know too many good people that died and gone to hell that used to be in a house of the living God by popping pills. They lost their walk with God because they couldn't touch God anymore. Their senses were burned and they did not have a feel of God anymore. But I'm going to tell you something. I know some as well that got off that stuff. God delivered them from that stuff. And God could move on their heart. And they made it to heaven. Glory. Hallelujah. We are compassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses. Paul said, I have run my course. I have finished my race. All that was asked of me. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know about you, but I can just see it in my mind. I, I got a great imagination. Oh, Paul was out there. He had been preaching and the Jews didn't like it. That's nothing unusual. Sinners generally don't like good preaching. Anybody not enjoying this tonight? How many of y'all did not enjoy that Sunday night? I just wondering, okay? See, if he left here worried, griping about Sunday night's message, let me tell you something, that just showed you you needed it. <laughs> Amen? Well, you know something? A hungry sponge does not reject water. It'll soak it up. It, 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 we got to get hungry. Amen. Because we're the witnesses. We're the witnesses. But can you see Paul? They stoned him. They left him for dead. I imagine even the other disciples thought he was dead. All of a sudden, 
something started moving, them rocks started shuffling a little bit, and a hand. I've been through. I've been through this one. Devil, you better try harder next time. Bring it on, Jack. I'm going to knock out a devil today. Can I tell you something? Your testimony will knock a devil out. Amen? Because there's a devil attacking another sister or brother in this church, and your testimony is what's needed. Don't go hide in a corner and say, Well, uh, you know, God, I don't, want to, I don't want nobody to know I went through a problem. Oh, no, I went through a problem. I want you to know I went through it. Why? Right? Because Jesus brought me through it, and it's still good. He's still powerful. He's still overcoming. Oh, hallelujah. I'm just feeling the Holy Ghost tonight. Brother, I've been through a few things. I don't know about you, but I've been through a few things. I've been through a few things, Sister Graham. I've been kicked. I've been spit on. I've been, uh, I've been fired. I've been lied on. I've been hired by the wrong company. I've even disobeyed God. But through it all. Through it all. I don't know what you've been through tonight. It doesn't matter what you've been through. Jesus is what matters. Did you come through holding on to His hand? I'm going to tell you what, if you are not holding on to His hand, you're like the AA guy. 30 years later, you're still an alcoholic. You hadn't touched an out drop of alcohol in 30 years. Hi, my name is Tommy. Hi, Tom. I'm an alcoholic. I haven't had any alcohol in 29 years, 7 days, 6 months, and 32 hours. Oh... Can I tell you something? If you'll get over your addiction with Jesus, Amen. Mm -hmm. your testimony is, Hi, my name is Tommy. 36 years ago, I got filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God delivered me from alcohol, drugs, never have wanted again in my life. And whenever it has been tempted to me, I've just rejected it because I'm not interested in it. God's good. Amen. You can have the same thing I got. You can come through with me. If God did it for me, He'll do it for you. It's time that we reject this foolishness to think that we cannot be overcomers. Yes. Hello? You don't understand, Pastor. I was born in a home that my mama was a riverboat gambler and my daddy was a street walker. And it's me oh, I'm just destined to be a gambling gigolo. That's why you need to be born again of water and of spirit. Hello? I got a new dad. My dad, I like my dad. I like my mama. Daddy's a preacher. Mama was a preacher's kid and a preacher's wife. But I'm going to tell you something. I got a new daddy. That daddy was from the very beginning. He calls the world to be. He died for me. His blood runs through my veins. I've been washed in his blood, sanctified in his spirit. I made holiness. I got God on my side. I'm not denying the power. I've been through my sin. I've been through my sickness. I've been through my problem. And I stand here before for you as a witness that you're foolish. You're foolish if you don't get on board this train. You're a fool. I'm like Paul. I feel like I'm a fool all the time. I pray that. I, God, I'm a fool. God says, shut up. I don't call fools. But God, compared to you, I'm a fool. I had, had somebody call me about a dream the other night and, and it's a dream that I've had in, over many years and it was a confirmation to me and thank God for it but I'm like, God, I'm just an idiot. Because you know what? I can't, even, you know, get, I can't even get there on time without you because you created time. Have you ever thought about that? The minds didn't create a calendar. God did. Amen. That's right. Hello? You're not going to get anywhere. You won't even be at the job on time in the morning if it wasn't for God. You need to give Him thanks for it. Amen. And you'll find out your manic Mondays go a whole lot worse without Jesus. Get a hold of God and, and His, you know, God give you joy and power. We need to trust God more. We need to believe God more. I, I just, you know what? I, I feel this in the Holy Ghost. We're not going to do it tonight, but, but, but you need to start digging something out because some of y'all in here, some of y'all got some testimonies. Some of y'all got some testimonies that somebody else needs to hear. Hello? 
Amen. Can I tell you the testimony of my little boy that was born with a, with a collapsed lung? I gave him to God and God healed him. Can I tell you about me when I was born with a collapsed lung and God healed me? Can I tell you some testimonies? Can you tell me some testimonies? Because, Sister Johnson, tomorrow afternoon, the enemy may come in on me like a flood, and I need a testimony. I need something to grab a hold of faith. And you are the, you are the keeper. Because you've been through. You've been through. You've been through some things, Brother Hodges, that I haven't been through. I need the testimony from you. I need the, 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 my brother, my sister, my everybody. We need a testimony that God is bringing us through. I need a testimony, sister, sister, whatever your name is. Emmerich. God wants to bring you through. Have you been through some things? Have you been through some things? I feel in the Holy Ghost right now. Sister Martinez, you got that song that I had that I said we weren't going to play. I feel like we just need to stand on our feet and start praising God for some things that we've been through.